we're going to be making a trivia game for App Inventor 2. So we're going to get a series of questions and I'm going to answer this question and it's going to tell me whether I got it right or wrong. And here's the second question and we're going to answer it and get either right or wrong. And then this is the third and final question and then once we answer it, it again tells us if we got it right or wrong and since it's the last question, it also tells us how many points we ended the game with, so how many questions we answered correctly. And then once we click OK this time, it's going to reset the app so that we can play again. Alright, so let's get to the coding. So the first thing that we're going to want to have on our screen is a label at the top that's going to show the question. So just go ahead and drag a label over. And since that's going to be the question, below the question we want all the possible different answer choices. And we're going to display those using a list view. And we're going to need two more labels. One label is going to show the, whether they got the answer right or wrong. One label is going to show the number of points once they've reached the end of the game. And then we're also going to have that OK button that's going to tell them to go on to the next question. So go ahead and drag those over. And we're going to want to change the text on this button because it currently says text for button 1 and we want it to say OK. So we can go over to the right here under its properties and where it says text, change that to OK. But the thing about these last three elements is that we don't always want to show them on the screen. We only want to show them at a certain point. So we only want to tell them whether they got the answer right or wrong right after they answer the question and we only want to tell them how many points they have at the end of the game. And also we only want to show this button after they've answered a question. So the way that we'll resolve that is we're going to make these elements invisible. And you'll see that if we go under properties here, there's a little checkbox for visible or not. And we're going to start it off as invisible and then we'll turn it to visible later in the code. So do that for the, the two labels and the button. Great, so now we can get on to the code. So let's go to blocks. All right, so there are a few variables we're going to need to define. First, we're going to need to define a variable that keeps track of how many points the user has, and we'll add one each time they get a question right. So to do that, we're going to go under variables, under the blocks, and pick the first one that says initialize global name to. And I'm going to replace name with score. All right, and we have to start off our score at something. A good value to start off with is zero because they have zero points at the beginning of the game and we're gonna add one whenever they get one right. So go ahead and go under math and pick the zero. Great, and then another um, variable that we're going to need is something to keep track of which question that they are on so that we know which question to show them. So go ahead again and go under variables and pick initialize global name two again. And then I'm going to call this question num. And this is going to start off at one because they start at the first question and then advance to the second and etc. So I'm just going to copy uh, my zero up here and paste it just to make it a little bit easier. Great. Okay. The next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to figure out what our questions and our possible answers are going to be. And we're going to store both of those in two separate lists. So let's first pick our list for our questions. So that's going to again be another variable and then initialize global name two. I'm going to call this questions. And because this is going to be a list, we're going to go under the blue list category over here. And we want make a list because this is the one that lets us put in the different elements of the list, which in our case are going to be the different questions. So go ahead and pick that. All right, so now we get to be a little bit creative. We get to make up what our questions are going to be. And you see that there are little puzzle pieces here. That's going to accept text. So if you go under text, it's going to be the first one with the empty quotes. So you can drag that. Now we can type whatever we want in there and that's going to be our first question.
Great, and then you can put as many questions as you would like. I'm just gonna put in two more. And don't forget that if you wanna add more than two elements, you're gonna click on this little blue thing and drag this down in there. And that will make another slot appear. Great, so go ahead and make your questions list. And now that we've made this, we also need to make a list of possible answers. So we're gonna drag down another variable one and call it um, choices. And how we do this is going to be a little bit tricky because it's not just going to be a simple list, it's going to be a list of lists. So every element in our list, every smaller list, is going to contain all of the different answer choices for that corresponding question. And that may sound a little confusing, but hopefully it'll make sense as we do this. So go ahead and drag down another list thing, and it's gonna be the make a list one. And we're gonna need it to have three slots, one to correspond with each of our questions. So add one more. Alright, and for each of our little puzzle pieces, we're going to have another list in there. So we're going to need another make a list block. Okay, and I'm just going to copy that and add them to the other two. Alright, so each of these inner lists is going to have the possible answer choices for that question. And I'm going to make them have four answer choices, so I want to add two more to each of these. All right, and you can be a little creative here too about what your answer choices are going to be. And note that for each of these inner lists, these correspond to the questions I have put in my question list. So my possible answers to who wrote Little Women are Henry David Thoreau, Jean Webster, Louisa May Alcott, and Emily Dickinson. My answers, my second list in here, which corresponds to the second question, what does DNA stand for? are these answers, and then for my third question, I go to my third inner list to see the possible answers for who was Ada Lovelace. All right, so there's one more list I'm going to have, and that's going to be the list that stores the correct answers, so that we'll have some way of telling the user whether or not they got the answer right. So again, we're going to go under variables and call this answers, and this is going to be another list and we're gonna have three slots in the list for our three questions. First slot in here is going to be the answer to the first question, the second one's gonna be the answer to the second question, and the third is gonna be the answer to the third question. So the answer to the first question is Louisa May Alcott, so I'm going to put that as my first element. The answer to the second one is deoxyribonucleic acid, so I'm going to put that there. And then Ada Lovelace was one of the first computer scientists, so that will go in the third slot. All right, cool. I'm just gonna reorganize what I have on the screen here a little bit just so things are a little less messy. All right, so let's keep in mind that when the user first goes to the screen, if we go back to our designer panel, they're just gonna see text for label one and this empty list thing, and that's not good. We need to have our first question in there and all of our answers when the user gets to the app initially. So let's resolve that and go back to blocks. So the way we set something up when the user goes to the screen the first time is this um, when block. If we go under screen one, there's this one called when screen one dot initialize. And that just means when the screen comes up for the first time. So let's go ahead and drag down that. So what do we want to do when the screen initializes? Well, we want to put stuff into that first label in that list view that we had set up initially. So let's go under label one, and there's something called set label one dot text two, and that's what we want to do because we want to put text in it. So go ahead and drag that down. What do we want our text to be? Well, this is just going to be our question, right? And we put that question in our questions list. So we're going to need to get our questions list and we're gonna to need to get a specific element out of it. And to do that, we're going to need to go to lists again and 
take out select list item because we're going to be grabbing and selecting that, um, that question from our list. And so we're gonna drag that down there and it's asking for two things. It's asking for our list and our index. And our list is just get go global questions right there so we can put that in. Our index, that's going to be asking for the position in the list. In the position of the question at the beginning is just one because we're just onto the first question. So go ahead and go to math and get that number and put one in it. All right, so there's one more thing that we're going to need to do and that's to populate our list view. So again, we're gonna go under list view and go to set list view one dot elements two. That's gonna let us set the, the elements that are inside of our list view. So we're gonna drag that down. And this time it's going to be very similar to what we did before, except this time, instead of going to our questions list, we're gonna be going to our choices list because we wanna be looking at the first thing in that list, which is gonna contain our answer choices. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this block to make it a little bit easier. And then we're going to switch it from questions to choices and keep the index at one because again, we're looking at the answers to our first question. At this point, I encourage you to go ahead and test out the app. You should find that it will load the question and the answer choices, but if you click on it, it doesn't do anything because we haven't coded that part. You may also find that the font is a little bit too small in the list view. If that's the case, you can just go back under designer and make it bigger. So now that we've got the basics down, let's change our code so that we can tell the user whether or not they got the question right. And we want to give them that feedback as soon as they select something from the list view. So let's go over to list view one and see if there's anything in there that can help us with that. Right at the top, there's list view one, when list view one dot after picking. And so whenever, as soon as the user pick something from the list view, then we're gonna trigger some response. And that's what we wanna do in this case because we wanna tell them if their answer is right or wrong after they pick their response. So let's go ahead and drag that. And I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom here so we have lots of room. All right, so as soon as they pick something from the list view, we need to check to see if their answer was right or wrong. Since that's a conditional thing, so we're checking if right or wrong, we're gonna need an if block. So let's go under control. And there's this if then clause, and that's what we're gonna need. All right, so in this puzzle piece right through here, this is asking for some conditional that it's going to evaluate. And if it's true, it's going to trigger some response. And in this case, we wanna check to see if what the user chose from the list view, what answer choice they chose is actually the correct answer. So we're going to be checking for equality. We're gonna be seeing if those two things are equal. So let's go under logic and see if there's something there. And there's this little block here that lets us check to two, see if two things are equal. So we want that. All right, so we're going to be comparing what the user put in and what the actual answer is. To get what the user put in, we're gonna to need to go under list view again. and pick list view one dot selection. That's going to give us whatever they selected, the text of what they selected. And put that there. All right, so we need to see if their selection is equal to the actual right answer. But the thing is, the right answer is going to change depending on which question we are on. So we're going to need to look in our answer list, right? We're gonna to need to look in this answer list over here where we had put the answers to each of the questions, but how are we gonna know which one to look at? Well, we have this question num variable that we had made, and this is keeping track of what question we're currently on. So we can just use this variable to figure out where to look in the list. So if we're on the second question, we're gonna need to look at the second element in the list to figure out what the right question is, all right? So let's go back down over here we're going to need to go back under lists to allow us to pick out the correct selection. And we're gonna use select item from list again and drag that here. So this is asking for our list and our index. 
our list is going to be our list of answers, right? So let's scroll back up here so we can get that. If we mouse over answers, this block appears and we can go back down. All right, that's our list. And our index is going to be the question that we're on. And this is where our question num variable comes in handy. I'm just gonna copy and paste this block and switch this to question num. All right, so let's just look over this again. We're checking to see if what the user selected in the list view is equal to the answer that is at the position of the question that we're currently on. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So what do we want to do if their answer is right? Well, the first thing that we want to do is increase their score, right? Because if they got a question right, they get another point. So let's get our score um, variable. I'm going to scroll back up to the top here, mouse over score, and get set global score to, because we're going to be setting it to a new value. Okay, so what are we going to set it to? Well, we just want to increase it by one. So we're just going to set it equal to what it was before plus one. So we're going to need to go back under math for that because we're adding numbers and just this first one here for adding. And the first thing that we're adding is just one because we are adding one to their score. So go under math and get that number. And then the, where the second thing that we're adding is our score variable. All right, so if we look over this, if they got the question right, then we're going to take their score and we're going to add one to it. And that's going to be our new score. All right, but that's not the only thing that we want to do if they get the question right. We also want to show in that label that we had created earlier that they did get the question right so that they know because they can't tell if we just increase their score variable by one. So if you remember, label two is the one that was in the position to show them whether they got the answer right. So we're going to go to set label one, label two dot text two, because that's going to allow us to put new text in that label and drag that down. I'm going to go under text and put this. You can put any sort of celebratory message. I'm just going to say. OK, all right, so this is what we're going to do if they get it right. What if they get it wrong? Well, this is where an else clause is going to come in handy. If you remember, an else clause lets us deal with the events that are not covered in the if clause. So in our if clause, we're checking to see if they're equal. In an else clause, we're going to be dealing with the case in which they're not equal. So when they got it wrong. So I'm going to click on this little blue swirly thing, and that's going to let us drag down an else, not else if, but just else. All right, so else, if they got it wrong, well, we're not going to increment their score, but we are going to set the label to something. So I'm going to copy and paste this, but it's not going to be correct. We're going to tell them that they got it wrong. We put text in our labels. But the thing is, if you remember in the beginning, we made these labels invisible. So the user can't actually see them unless we make the label visible. But we can do that very easily just by going under label two. And there's set label two dot visible two. And we're gonna drag that down. And this is either gonna take true or false. If we put true, then it is going to be visible. If we put false, then it is not going to be visible. And we wanna make it true, and that's going to be under logic. All right, let's just review this. So if they answer correctly, we're going to add one to the score. We're going to put correct in the label. If they didn't get it right, we're going to put incorrect in the label. And no matter whether or not we, they answered it correctly, we're going to make that label visible so that they can see it. One other thing that we're going to need to do is we need to add one to our question variable. Our question variable kept track of which number question that they are on. And since they just answered a new question, we need to add one to that variable so that we can move on. 
So um, this is actually going to be very similar code to what we did with the score because again, we're adding something by one. So I'm going to copy and paste this block. But we'll need to change it from score to question num. But we have to be a little bit careful here because we're not going to just going to keep giving the user questions forever. At some point, we're going to run out of questions. And specifically, that's going to be once the question variable gets to four, because we only have three questions. So once we get to question number four, that doesn't exist. So we need to end the game at that point. So we need to check to see if question num is now equal to four, in which case we'll end the game. So let's get another if clause because we're going to be checking for something and bring it down there. All right, so what do we need to put in our condition here? Well, again, like we had before with this equals, we're going to be again checking to see if question num is equal to four. So I'm going to bring down an equals checker. And in the first position, I'm going to get question num. And in the second one, I'm just going to put the number four. Okay, so what do we want to do if question m is equal to four? Well, that means that we've reached the end of the game. So this is where label three is going to come in handy. Label three is the one that could tell the user that the game was over and how many points they had. So let's go get label three and put some text in it. This is going to be set label three dot text two. All right, so there are a few different separate pieces of text we're going to need to put in there because we need to get that points variable to put in the, the label. And so we're going to actually need to join separate pieces of text to stick them all in so that they'll all fit in this one puzzle piece. So let's go to text and get the join clause. And my first thing to go in there is just going to be um, a text that says game over and then you finished with and then in my second one here I'm going to put their score so I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to need one more spot to put in points so that it doesn't just say you finished with three I need to tell them that that's three points so let me get another text. So hopefully this makes sense. We're going to set label the text in label three to say game over, you finished with, then we're going to get their score and save points. And those are going to be all joined into one text block. But again, just as we needed to set label two to visible because it was invisible before, at this point we also need to make label three visible. So I'm going to copy and paste this block and make this label three. All right, so now we've told them that the game is over in label three, and we've actually made our label three visible. And once we've reached the end of the game, there are also a couple other things we wanna do, because we want to make sure that the app is ready for them to play again. So that means that we're going to need to reset their score, right? Because we don't want them to, to keep earning points with their same score, we need to make their score zero again. So I'm going to get set global score and then just keep the number one there, and, but this is going to be zero. All right, so we're gonna set their score to zero. And there's one other thing, we're going to also set the question number to one because they're no longer going to be on question four anymore. We're gonna bump them back to the beginning at question one. So I'm going to copy and paste this and change this to question them and make it a one. So just to recap, if, they're, if the question that they're now on is four, which doesn't exist because that means we're past the end of our questions, we're going to set the text in that label to say game over and tell them how many points they finished with. We're going to make that label visible so it actually appears on the screen. And then we're gonna reset their score and the question that we're on so that they can play again. And at this point, regardless of whether or not they're at the end of the game, we also need to make that button visible because 
no matter what, we want that button to be there because it will either allow them to advance to the next question or it will allow them to play the game again. So let's go to button 1 and make it visible. There it is. Alright, so if you test this out now, you should see that it now tells you whether you got your answer right or wrong. However, if you try to click that OK button, nothing is going to happen because we haven't coded that part yet. So what do we want to do when the user clicks that button? Well, we want to advance the screen to show the next question, right? So let's do that first. Let's go under button 1 and get when button one dot click, and just I'm just going to drag this over here. So when they click the button, we're going to need to repopulate our first label at the top that shows the question and our list view underneath that shows the possible answer choices. And this is actually going to be very similar to what we had at the beginning where we initialized our label and our list view. Except this time, we don't want to be looking at the first index because then that's always going to give us that first question and are always going to give us our first set of answer choices. Instead, we need to find the index at our question number. So let's copy and paste these two blocks and just change them slightly. All right, so we need to change this index thing because this is not always going to be one. What index are we going to be looking for? Well, this is where our question num variable is going to come in handy again because we need to go to our question list and find the question that's at the position of the question that we're on. So if we're on the second question, we need to find the question that's at position two in our list. And likewise, if we're at the second question, we're going to need our second list of possible answers. So I'm just going to get this global question num over here and put that in here and in here. And also, so this is the point at which we move on to the next question. That means that we want to get rid of that OK button. We want to get rid of the, um, the feedback, whether it was correct or incorrect. And if this is one of those situations, we also want to get rid of the spot where it tells them how many points that they've earned because we're starting over from scratch. So that means we're going to need to make those elements invisible. Let's go to label 2 first and go to set label 2.visible. And this is going to be a false. So go under logic and pick false. I'm just going to copy and paste this for label 3. And then I'll go over to the button and make this also false. So congratulations, you just finished the trivia app. This was a lot of code in it. Sometimes it was a little complicated, so if you feel like you don't understand anything, just go back and read over the code and see if it makes sense to you. And also feel free to leave questions in the comments.